How's it going everyone? Uh, welcome back to my channel, or if you're joining for the first time, welcome. Uh, my name is Spider, and in this video, we're going to be breaking down uh, week four of the WPF going up against Gravy. His link uh, will be in the description below along with the rest of the coaches in the WPF. Uh, Delta Division, we are one and two right now headed in after a rough loss last week uh, to the Sun team. Um, but, you know, we have a chance to kind of right our wrongs here. Uh, against a very capable battle at, battler, I think he's 3-0 here, so um, makes great content too. But you know, again, if you uh, if you want to watch some of that stuff, uh, definitely go over to his channel. I'll definitely be checking out his perspective from this one for sure. Um, so he's got a team of Shen Pao, Landorus, Therian, Primarina, Terrapagos, Iron Hands, Mew, Salazzle, Bruxish, Trevenant, and Duraludon. Um, I didn't know he had Bruxish until about 15 minutes ago, and I already have my team in the game, obviously, because I'm here. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really change anything, to be honest. It's not a Terra Captain. I, I do, I wouldn't be surprised if he brings it, because Brux is just, water plus Psychic is pretty damn good against my team. Um, but, you know, it is still kind of a, uh, you know, it's a lower tier Pokemon. But so is Trevenant, and I'm actually kind of predicting Trevenant, so who knows. Um, his Terra Captains are Salazzle and Duraludon. Salazzle can Terra into a Fire, Dark, or Ground type. Duraludon can tear it into a steel, fairy, or ground type. So um, that's interesting to note. Those are the six on the for, on the layout that I'm predicting. Um, now I have the, I have the battle in about an hour from now, and it will be a voiceover. I think I, I don't suspect I'll have the ability to kind of talk about the game during the game, but that's fine, honestly. I, I, I know some people actually prefer prefer voiceovers and all that. So because it gives me kind of an outside perspective. And it, it allows me to ha actually focus in the game as much, rather than trying to put on a show, I guess. So, um, not that I'm really able to do so anyway. So yeah, I mean, looking at his team, obviously Shampoo is very strong. Uh, as far as removal, he's only got Terrapagos, but Terrapagos is a great uh, rapid spinner um, because it's a normal type, but it's basically multi-scale um, is its ability, I, I think. And Terra Star Storm is still an incredibly powerful move with really no downside. Um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of mock, or I've done a few mocks for this battle, and I kept seeing Rock Polish CM uh, Terrapagos, so gonna have to limit that, and um, and I, I got I got some tricks up my sleeve for sure. Um, so yeah, let's head right into the team. Let's look at what we got rocking here. Uh, first up, now this is a really fun one, and I don't I forget who to shout out, but I saw this. So I was mocking, I was trading trading mocks like two weeks ago, and I was this. Thunderous is eerily similar to one I saw against me, but it was for the other guy's mock, right? So, you know, it, it had no bearing on me, but obviously this is a uh, an interesting set, and I kind of got it from him, so I have to shout out. Um, not sure, you know, if he's going to be watching this or what, so, or whatnot. With the voice crack, um, okay, so we've got Thunderous. Um, I knew once I saw Lander Starian, this is the set I wanted to bring. Uh, it's Defiant with 200 HP, uh, 252 attack, 4 defense, and 52 speed, jolly nature, bulk up acrobatics, brick breaks, and headbutt with the adrenaline orbs. The plan is to lead with this. If he leads the lander, it's perfect. If he leads something else, um, you know, we'll have to see what we want to do. Probably we're just going to switch. Unless it's prim If he leads Primarina, I think I just stay in and bulk up predicting the lander is switching because uh, landers make sense to, to switch into this thing. You know, I don't get U-turn, so I can't really hit it very hard. I can't he can basically take advantage of Thunderous um, with his Landorus. So I think, uh, you know, Adrenaline Orb, if you don't know, if you get affected by Intimidate, your speed goes up, uh, and that's a one-time use, so it's a, you know, you use it and then you don't have the item, which is great for because it doubles Acrobatic's power to 110 uh, base. Um, I'm not Prankster, so bulk up isn't priority, but if I do activate the Adrenaline Orb, I'm going to be plus one speed, and with the speed, I should be able to outspeeding almost everything um, at plus one. So the hope is that hold on, what am I? The hope is yeah okay. So I'm 298, which speed creeps a anything that's speed creeping Iron Crown pretty much. So if he's like Mew and he tries to Dragon Dance up and he's speed creeping Iron Crown, it'll be 297, I believe. And then 298 is what I'm hitting. Um, or if he's obviously he doesn't have Sneeze Learning more, if he's like speed creeping it with. Scarf Shen Pao or, or, you know, some sort of Salad Berry Salazzle, I don't know. Um, they will not outspeed me if they're outspeed creeping that. Now, it's a little bit of, you know, kind of uh, game gamesmanship, I guess. I, I don't know. I, it won't outspeed a max speed Landorus, which is 
if it's scarfed, which is kind of troublesome because it does um, get Stone Edge. But Stone Edge is not 100% accurate, obviously. Um, we're not relying on a miss, but at the same time, it, it, I don't know if he really runs Stone Edge. I think U-Turn, Knockoff, Stealth Rock, Earthquake would be likely. Um, then again, I certainly wouldn't be surprised. So obviously with the Defiant, uh, we're gonna be a plus one attack after the Intimidate instead of minus one. Um, so we'll have an instant, you know, if he switches in as I bulk up, I instantly have plus two attack, plus one defense, and plus one speed. And at that point, I'm just rolling things. I mean, this coverage is really all I need. Acrobatics deals huge damage to things. Um, Zen Headbutt's obviously to do a little bit more damage to the Iron Hands. Uh, and then Brick Break is just for the Duraludon. Um, it also hits Shan Pao really hard uh, in case he wants to overpredict or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, obviously Duraludon can Terastalize. I don't know if he will, knowing that he resists my dual stab. I'm thinking uh, if he sees bulk up Acrobatics and Headbutt, um, he might just not expect Acrobatics to be there, or Brick Break to be there. So that's our hope. Um, super Heat here. I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping it works out. Um, next up is going to be our Ting Lu. Uh, we have the leftovers with Earthquake Spikes, Ruination, and Whirlwind. So we have 248 HP, 92 defense with a bold nature, 112 special defense, and 56 speed. The speed's just there so that we can try to outspeed an Iron Hands. Um, if he doesn't bring a lot of speed on Iron Hands, we, we should be able to outspeed it and get a big, well, we might be able to outspeed it and get a big Earthquake off. Um, the 92 defense plus the impish nature is going to give us um, enough. Uh, investment so that we can live a jolly no boosting item ice spinner we live two of those from shan pao as long as we're at full health and i think it's actually even if rocks are up because our, our leftovers kind of um our leftovers mitigates the or makes up for the stealth rocks i guess if they're there as you can see we don't have any hazards on our team or hazard removal uh, on our team so that's something to consider keep in mind uh, but yeah, just a nice little pivot to certain things um, like a Salazzle uh, or a or a Mew um, or a Duraludon, um, even a Terabagos. So if Terabagos tries to set up on me, I can just obviously whirlwind it out. Um, Ruination is really nice for the lander to switch in. Um, and I guess things that take Earthquake pretty well, uh, like a defensive Primarina, like a Trevenant. Um, I keep seizing, seeing Sneasel on the thing, but it's a Bruxish. I gotta keep that in mind. <laughs> Um, yeah, so again, and then Whirlwind, Spike's Whirlwind just kind of helps to face things around, try to get some chip on things. Uh, kind of for our next Pokemon here, Justifiable, um, which is our Iron Crown. Beautiful design. I kind of like this thing. Uh, I kind of do. So, uh, Booster Energy with uh, 192 HP, 116 Special Attack, and 200 Speed with a Timid Nature. So obviously, looking at the stats here, we're gonna out we're gonna get the uh, our speed stat is one point higher than Special Attack. So the booster energy is going to give us a speed boost which is pretty valuable um because well first of all i'm speed creeping a landers right so so the landers is never going to outspeed me um while that booster energy is alive i don't because i don't think it gets rock polish anymore so even if it's scarfed i'll outspeed it no matter what and um you know we can go for a calm mine iron defense uh kind of that strat there Stored power and tachyon cutter, cutter. Of course, stored power gets stronger as we keep boosting, um, and tachyon cutter, cutter will just hit, um, you know, his. Uh... Wow, he actually doesn't have a dark type, but he has what? Yes, he does. He has shin power. Um, tachyon cutter, obviously, for the shin power, um, and you know, if he goes terra dark salazzle, maybe, which I could see since I have a spectre on my team, which I'm not bringing, um, which is kind of crazy. Bruxus does resist my dual stab. <laughs> So that's something to keep in mind, but I, I you know, I can kind of probably take advantage of Bruxish, knowing that I have Iron Defense here. I'm expecting him to bring Sucker Punch Shan Pao, uh, but probably not Crunch. I don't see Crunch really being relevant here. Or is Ice Shell? I'm thinking Psychic Fang's definitely for the Quackle Ball, and then he'll have to bring Ice Spinner for several things on my team. I think Sucker Punch makes sense in case I have Scarfers or Booster Energy, um, Iron Crown, which I do. And then maybe maybe Sword Stance, maybe Ice Shard, um, maybe Sacred Sword. So for the Arcanine, I do expect Sucker Punch though. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. You know, if we if it comes in on us, um, I can Iron Defense and kind of play those mind games. If he doesn't have Crunch though, I can just Iron Defense on it, and it doesn't really do much to me unless he has Sacred Sword. Um, but yeah, and then once I'm at max defense, I can hopefully take that Sucker Punch. 
So, yep, this thing's just trying to come in late game, hopefully, and, and do a little bit of sweeping. It would be lovely if I brought this thing in and Shin Pao's gone. That would be ideal. But we'll see. Oops. Um, Regigigas is next, uh, which is physically defensive. Terra Fairy uh, with 240 uh, HP. What's up? Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, it's physically defensive. This thing will deal with Shen Pao pretty well. Uh, I have 16 speed. I think just in case he has like no speed on Mew and once my slow start is done, I can outspeed that thing and go kind of crazy. Um, so I have Body body Slam, Terra Blast, Protect, and Knock Off. Terra Blast, so obviously I'm Terra Fairy, right? Um, and this is just to kind of deal with Shen Pao. It's really the only thing that can take hits from Shampao, uh, unfortunately, um, but, you know, Protect can stall out my slow start turns, and otherwise, obviously, Body Slam can try to fish for parries. I, I thought about running Thunder Wave, but I can't paralyze landers if I run Thunder Wave, and Body Slam still gets some chip on things. Knock off will just knock off items, obviously, because that can be helpful, for sure, and Terra Blast uh, Fairy will hit things like the Iron Hands and the Shampao. Both of those are weak to Fairy, and again, if my slow start is not relevant anymore you know if I'm if I'm not slow started anymore that move is going to be doing a lot of damage so figured I didn't really need anything else uh, on this Terra Fairy makes sense just for the champ out and the iron hands I suppose uh, and this Pokemon is still pretty nice for Bruxish in case he does bring that thing um, next up we have Drago our uh, debuting Dragolge with the rocky helmet even though it's Spadef and I'll kind of explain that so it's max HP 196 Spadef and and 64 speed with a calm nature and this thing is just really here yeah you know, i have a 64 in speed just so i can try to outspeed iron hands i think it's the same speed tier 140 yeah trying to outspeed iron hands and get some big damage on that thing uh, i initially had a physical defense but i changed it to special defense um, just because i want to be able to take it from primarina a little bit better i can flip turn around which is great dragon ball dragon ball Sludge Bomb, Dragon Pulse, Dragon Tail. Again, Dragon Tail is just for phasing. And I don't expect him to bring in his Primarina on this thing. Um, I do have the Rocky Helmet just to kind of punish flip turns from Primarina. Uh, as well as, you know, U-turns from Landorus uh, and whatnot. Um, so, you know, just to, like I said, just kind of get chip. It's also, if, if Tinglu is weak or down, um, I can also deal with, uh, I can Dragon Tail uh, Terrapagos, which is pretty helpful. Uh, and Dra Dragon Tail is actually better because if I don't have spikes up, or it might be boots, but I'm, ex I'm assuming it's going to be leftovers. If I don't have hazards up, I can Dragon Tail, and then it's kind of wonder, it's um, it's multi skill. Uh, I know it's not called that, but essentially it's multi skill is broken, um, which is going to be really helpful for certain things. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, that's the Dragon It's also nice for Salazzle in case he brings it. Uh, I think it, a stalling Salazzle can be really annoying against this team, which is kind of why I wish I ran rest on Ting Lu, but that kind of helps other, you know, that, that kind of invites um, set up on this thing, so uh, anyway, last but not least is uh, Quaquaval, which is uh, a sweeping Quaquaval, um, hoping this thing puts in work, 112 HP, 252 attack, 4 defense, and 140 speed, jolly nature, uh, this thing, what is it out speed? I think I outspeed like an adamant landorus. I think that's what that is. Let me check. Let me just make sure. No, that's the wrong landorus, you goon. Okay. Two. S no. Okay, I don't outspeed an adamant landorus at all. I don't know what it is. It's something. Um. Anyway, uh, actually no. I think it's one step at plus one. So obviously I have the aqua step with the close combat ice spinner uh, combo. I figured ice spinner is important to have there because. Trevenant is going to just stop this thing if I don't have Ice Spinner. Um, and it would make sense for him to bring it, because otherwise I don't really have any reason to run that move. So I think hopefully I'll catch him with that. I had Aqua Jet, but I changed it to Ice Spinner. Aqua Step, I think once I'm at plus one, I outspeed everything that's not Scarfed. Um, if Shan Pao... Yeah, if Shan Pao is speed creeping a, a Spectrier, which I'm expecting him to do, I'll outspeed that thing by one point. So I'm hoping, you know, if... If I have spikes up or whatever, or if Primarina is already um, kind of chipped down, I'm hoping to Sword Stance on the switch in, and then maybe Aqua Step once, 
and then uh, proc the Roselli Berry, which if you don't know, um, it, it turns the first fairy type move that hits you. It's like a Yachi Berry, but for fairy type moves. I'll just say that. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, if I close, if I sword stance on the switch, Aqua Step, and then maybe Aqua Step again, um, I'll be in a good position to sweep. So that's the team. Uh, like I said, I've been battling about an hour. And uh, I'm going to cut the video here and I'll see you there. All right, uh, here we are in the battle, obviously. Um, going to be another post commentary kind of voiceover uh, type of video here. Um, yeah, I just didn't have the, the means to really be recording um, kind of live com right here. But you do see my, my kind of live reactions and all that. Um, so I guess that's that's better than nothing, right? So uh, <clears throat> Gravy ends up bringing the Shen Pao, Iron Hands, Landorus, Primarina, uh, Salazzle, and uh, Bruxish. So that's fun. Uh, I did kind of expect uh, Bruxish, but I expected either Trevenant or Bruxish. I knew that... Uh, or I, I was fairly confident that one of those were coming, uh, and probably not both of them. But everything else seems to make sense. Uh, we have to watch out for that Salazzle, because it can uh, terastalize into a fire, dark, or ground type. So that's something to consider. Um, obviously, I had kind of uh, some, not trouble, but you know I had to get the layout fixed and all that. So um, yeah, I'm just going to leave with Thunderous, because I'm you know hoping that, uh, you know, he, maybe he leads Primarina, maybe he leads uh, Bruxish, and then I can hopefully get that Landers to come in uh, and proc the Adrenaline Orb. That is the plan. Um, so, you know, that's that's going to be the hope here. Um, if I was better editing, I'd just kind of cut out the lull points, but I'm not. So, you know, feel free to uh, speed up this video um, in the settings or, or whatnot, um, which is fine. So, <laughs> anyway... <clears throat> We're going to go up against Paige with the gouging flame, gouging fire in the background, which is pretty epic. Got that fit on. Um, he does lead Bruxish, which is beautiful for us. I think uh, this is pretty ideal. Uh, I didn't really expect a Primarina lead, but Bruxish makes sense, especially if it's Choice Scarfed. I believe it does get flip turned, so... Um, and, you know, it, since I led with Thunders, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary if that, that I'm also Scarfed. So that is even more of a reason to just hard switch enough on Landorus. So I'm doing calcs right here, um, I think. I don't really know what I'm calcing because I'm obviously just going to click bulk up. Uh, he does switch and obviously I'm very excited because I'm expecting the Landorus. <laughs> but he brings out Handing Out L's which is a great nickname for his Iron Hands. And I am very distraught. Uh, this is not how I plan this to go. But um, it's still fun. It, it's still, it's still going to be... You know, this isn't a terrible situation for me because I do outspeed still and I can get up a second bulk up if I wanted. I also have Zen Headbutt, which I'm definitely glad I brought uh, just for this situation. Uh, it could be defensive, it could be choice banned, I'm not really sure. Um, I end up just going for the Zen Headbutt this turn because I want to gauge the damage and kind of see what this thing is. Because if I go for bulk up and he's just choice banded and he ice punches me, uh, that's an issue. Um, also, if he Volt Switches on my bulk up and gets in Xi'an Pao, it might be able to kill me from full, or near full, I'm not sure. Uh, but then it would just kind of be wasting the Thunderous. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to get some big damage off here. I knew it was going to do about half, um, but you know, either side of that could either, could really depend on, you know, what kind of set it is. So I do just under half and he's Rocky Helmet. I do get a flinch, which I celebrate because, you know, it's part of the game. <laughs> I'm going to celebrate hacks that goes, excuse me, hacks that goes my way and I'm going to not celebrate hacks that doesn't go my way but you know that's part of the game um <clears throat> uh, i imagine he would have just gone for well i, I don't want to spoil anything but he's obviously a defensive uh, iron hands with that set i figure i just bulk up again because you know on the off chance <clears throat> i live a hit here uh i can just kill him with another zen head but i didn't want to go for another zen head but obviously because then i just you know i could get a flinch but i do take rocky helmet damage so it's not even like that good he ends up resting here um so rest sleep talk uh makes sense to me uh, which means he's probably not volt switch uh I, you know i would expect some sort of move to be able to hit ting lu um and then probably another move to hit you know dragology or something maybe an ice punch or maybe he's just dual stab i don't know um so at this point i still don't know if he's he has ice punch um which is why i don't bring in dragology and also at this point i'm figuring you know i might as well just stay in with thunderous i'm at plus three at this point 
So I'm still going to be de dealing massive damage to anything. Uh, he does end up going for the Sleep Talk, um, and he pulls a Drain Punch. So uh, not the biggest pull on his part, but I, I suppose... Well, I'll just spoil it. His last move is Wild Charge. Um, so he really has like a 33% chance to, to get anything good here. Obviously, you don't want Rest. Uh, Drain Punch is resisted and doesn't do that much. And then Wild Charge uh, is your best move there. So uh, he's going to have to Sleep Talk again. Um, I think I just continue to bulk up because I can't actually, you know, knock him out. I think that the higher you go up in your stats, like if I continue to bulk up, it's going to make, make less and less of a difference. Like the first bulk up is, or the first, you know, if you get the plus one, it's a 50% boost, right? But if you're, um, you know, once you get up from like, the difference between like plus four and plus six really isn't that much of a, or plus four and plus five, it isn't that much of a difference and so on. So he does pull the, uh, the big wild charge there. Uh, can get some big damage off. Not really, but, you know, it's helpful damage, especially because he's, he's Rocky Helmet. So uh, at this point, I'm just kind of calculating, you know, how do I beat this thing? Um, you know, without, without, without losing my, th like I want, I want my thunders to be on the field, even if it's low after beating the iron hands, because killing the iron hands is kind of helpful. It kind of opens up the quack of all. Um, but even so, like, like I'm not switching at this point, I'm, I'm boosted up. I'm already at half health. This thing is, is it, it's run its course as far as it, uh, it's not going to work with the landers, uh, as far as that kind of situation because at this point I'm too low to live an ice shard from well I might be able to at this much defense um, but I think I'm at plus five at this point and I know that a zen headbutt will knock him out um, <clears throat> we thankfully land the zen headbutt and I'm in t I'm in about 20% health here um, so even though I have so much physical defense it's not like I can live many hits in fact Salazzle does outspeed me if it has you know any sort of speed really so uh, I'm expecting either that or maybe like a Choice Scarf Bruxish. Uh, I'm hoping Landorus comes in here. If it's Choice Scarf, it can kill me with Stone Edge, but then it'll proc my Adrenaline Orb, uh, which then I'd be able to outspeed it, and then I'd get like another kill easily. So, um, but that doesn't happen. It's a little spoiler. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm really hoping for. Uh, it doesn't work out though. I think that was the best sequence though, um, kind of branching off here. To, to kill the Iron Hands, because I don't think a plus four Zen Habit would have killed, and if it doesn't kill, I gotta take another Rocky Helmet um, uh, round, and, and at that point it comes pretty close to actually knocking me out. So uh, I think that the best case scenario in that situation was knocking out the Iron Hands and having my Thunderous uh, still on the field uh, for a sack. So um, at this point, Brux just comes in, and there's no way it's gonna be. There's no way Gravy would risk bringing this thing in if it's like banded with Aqua Jet. That might not even kill me at this point because my defense is so high. So, you know, I'm just going to switch because I know the Choice Scarf is pretty evident here. Um, I think I end up going... Uh, I'm actually not sure what I end up going. Either Regigigas or Dragology. I, but the thing about Dragology is he could still click Psychic Fangs here if he's adamant scarfed and it'll still knock me out. So, um, I end up going Regigigas, uh, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I don't think I do. I don't think I go Regigigas because I remember it, it takes damage later on. Um, yeah. Wait. Okay, well, let's find out ourselves. Okay, I do go Regigigas. All right, I was wrong. Um, so it, this makes more sense, though, because obviously Dragology is weak to the Psychic Fangs. Um, uh, he's going to end up wave crashing here, I believe. Uh, I like the textures on Regigigas. I didn't know that it was going to be like... Uh, I, is that like a rubbery texture? I'm not really sure. He does actually. Okay, he does like it. Fangs. I was wrong. Um, so I calc that to see that it's probably Adamant Choice Scarf or Jolly Choice Scarf. Actually, it was. He showed me that paste afterwards. It is a max speed uh, Jolly Scarfed Bruxish. So, which would have uh, outsped my Iron Crown by one point, by the way. <laughs> my Terra, my Booster Energy Iron Crown, because my my Iron Crown was sped crept. If you watch the Team Builder, it was sped crept for anything speed creeping. Um, my uh, base 90 which is arcanine but bruxis is base 92 so if it's max speed it actually goes hits 310 and my iron crown was 309 so or was it 311 and 310 i don't know one of the two so anyway um you know i'm obviously gonna kind of force a switch there he could have stayed in but he's probably expecting the thunder wave or the body slam there one of the two and he didn't want the bruxis to get slowed down there so just gonna knock off the citrus berry, which is interesting. Um, curious what that's for. It might be like a situation where the the landers was EV'd to um, 
take just over half of something and then the citrus berry procs and then it can live another one maybe that's the situation i'm not too sure um at this point i'm kind of worried about him just going for rocks here it kind of makes sense uh, for him to do that um but i also don't want to take too much damage on this reggie gigas because it's uh it's very important for the shan pal and i can't really hit this thing back very hard at all anyway even if i wanted to stay in so i'm gonna go end up end up going into eq my ting lu um, hoping that he clicks an earthquake or even a u-turn i'm really obviously i'm crossing my fingers here to not see the stealth rocks and i see the stealth rocks so thunderous is officially not officially gone but if it comes in it's gone because i do not have boots so um, at this point i end up going for ruination i believe just to get some damage on anything uh, i'm assuming he's going to u-turn out and right now i don't really see the use in the spikes uh, Spikes was probably in hindsight a better play. Ah, I'm not sure about that. It ends up, I think Ruination ends up working out So, um, in this sequence. So he's going to U-turn, uh, and I believe he goes into Shen Pao, which is actually pretty helpful to, to cut that thing's HP in half. Uh, I don't know if Earthquake does more. It probably does a little bit more uh, than half, So, but but obviously I'm not going to I'm not gonna uh, Earthquake in front of a Landers in case it stays in for whatever reason. Fangs a lot is going to come in the Shen Pao. I love this Pokemon, honestly. Like, I, I think it's really fun. So, um, you know, going against it isn't fun, but you know, I've used it once, and it's just, it's just so fun to use. Um, so, um, anyway, obviously, I have the Regigiga specifically for this situation, uh, so I am going to switch it in. Uh, it will take Stealth Rocks damage, but it should still be able to live two Ice type attacks uh, from this thing as long as it's not banded or anything. Um, but yeah, that, that chip on it, that previous chip plus the Stealth Rocks damage is going to make it a little bit of a sketchy situation. Um, he could also predict the Quaqua Vol and Psychic Fangs if he has it. So um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and switch here. Not entirely convinced uh, that he would have... Yeah, so obviously, okay. I take the Stealth Rocks damage and he ends up going for the... Not the slow start. He ends up going for the Psychic Fang. No, he goes for the Sacred Sword. Damn. Okay. I. Th okay. No. I. I knew he went for that. I was just. Okay. Anyway. Um. He goes for Sacred Sword. Gets the. I guess the prediction right. The thing is, I'm pretty sure an earthquake would have knocked him out from there. So if I just stayed in, it would have been pretty crazy. Uh, so that's a pretty bold move by my opponent there. Uh, I'm gonna protect here just to get a little bit of leftovers health back. And I'm not gonna Terra because if I Terra, it's gonna be obvious. Um. That I am, indeed that and. It, you know, I have no reason to here because if I Terra here, I'm t I'm then Fairy type and he can just go for an Ice type move if he has it, like an Ice Spinner or an Ice Hook Crash, which at this point will probably knock me out. Um, so I will Terra this upcoming turn in case he. So there he went for Psychic Fangs, I guess predicting the Quakaval, but also knowing that it'll knock out the Regigigas. I'm gonna Terra into Drain Punch. That's actually a change I made that I didn't even uh, reference there. I, I think. Uh, I, I switched from Terra Blast to Drain Punch because I figured I didn't want to get set up on by uh, Chin Pao. I wasn't going to rely on a 30% par paralysis from Body Slam. And with Slow Start, Terra Blast doesn't knock it out. Maybe it does from half, but Drain Punch, if it was at full health, it would have done more um, than Terra Blast. So I figured it was better to change it to, to Drain Punch. So I ended up ter terrestrializing here. Uh, I was expecting the Sacred Sword, honestly, here um, because... I don't think Psyche Fangs knocks me out here, and he's going to go for it, and he doesn't knock me out. So, Regigigas is pretty much going to do its job here uh, in knocking out the Shan Pao. Uh, and I'm going to get a little bit of health back. I don't think it really matters at this point, um, but you never know. So, Shan Pao is going to go down, um, which is huge. Uh, right now, it is 6-4, to four, uh, but my opponent has the rocks up. Thunderous is basically a sack, and um, Regigigas is pretty low, So as well as Ting Lu being chipped. So... I think all this talking in a short amount of time just makes me yawn, so that's annoying. Um, he's going to go ahead and sell Azzle. Now, this Pokemon does get Nasty Plot, so and it can Terrastalize, so I'm not too sure what it wants to do. Uh, I figured I might want to switch here, um, go into, you know, Dragology, but if it is Terra Ground, it's going to hit me really hard with that, uh, with that move. And if I protect here, he could just substitute or Nasty Plot or do something, so I, I really didn't want to give him anything. Uh, obviously, it can just knock me out with a Sludge Wave here, um, 
but I, I figured, you know, Regigigas, for, for, for how low it is, it's not really going to give me anything at this point. So, I'm uh, going to end up knocking me out here with the Sludge Wave. Obviously, I have really no calcs to run there, because it was going to knock me out no matter what. Uh, so, I'm not really sure what this set is. Uh, but this gives, it does give me the momentum to bring in whatever I so desire. Um, I think I end up going Dragology here, uh, just to force it out. Um, and as you can see, my brother makes a makes a guest appearance. He doesn't know what he's doing. Um, but, you know, that's what happens when you live in a small house with five people. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to go for flip turn here. Because I'm not expecting um, him to stay in. Uh, you know, he could Terra and then Terra Blast, but he's still taking a crap ton from, from, uh, from like a Draco. So... I was expecting a switch out, as that is inde indeed what happens here. Landers comes in, and I'm going to flip turn. And at this point, it's kind of a golden opportunity to, to get my Quackaval in here, which is kind of going to be my strategy for winning this game. Um, I need to for, I need to bring it in several times, and it kind of sucks because I'm going to take Rock's damage. But on the first time, um, I need to get Primarina weak enough to where I can actually uh, knock it out later in the game. I'm not going to be able to, I know I have the Roselli Berry, but I'm not going to be able to set up immediately. I need to get it chipped somehow uh, and, and make sure it doesn't get that health back. Um, obviously, Rocky Helmet would suck. Leftovers would also suck. Uh, but at this point, I'm thinking, you know, my Thunderous is, you know, essentially gone. So I need to figure out how I'm actually going to win this game um, with the pieces I have left. Iron Crown is great. Uh, but it is resisted by Bruxish, and um, it's got to get set up decently, and at this point, there's really nothing to set up on that heavily, um, unless I, you know, catch, like, a Spex Salazzle locked in a Sludge Wave or something like that, um, or, like, a, or we know Brux is a Scarf, so maybe if it goes for Psychic Fangs, I can, you know, bring it in on that um, and get a free boost off, but, um, yeah, at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of figuring out, do I Close Combat or do I Aqua Step? I end up close combating, uh, I believe, because I yeah because I know the Primarina is going to come in, um, and I'm just trying to get as much damage off as possible. Obviously, close combat's going to do about 50% more to Primarina than Aqua Step, so um, yeah, that's what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, goes into the Primarina only fins. Great, he's got great nicknames all around. Honestly, <clears throat> this is another one. Uh, so we're going to do about 30 to 35, about 30% there, I'd say. Um, no Rocky Helmet and no Leftovers, so that's really good. Maybe he's Boots. I actually don't remember, uh, even though the paste was sent to me. So it will be cool if I just looked it up right now. Um, what item did he... Oh, Assault Vest. Okay, it was Assault Vest. Um, he had really, like, intricate EVs as well. Um, EV spread, so that was that was cool to see. I usually don't get that uh, technical with it, but I think it's I think it you know shows a lot of preparation when people do stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and sack the thunderous here. Uh, I feel like it's a, an appropriate situation because I was kind of expecting a flip turn and I didn't want to to get that off on the Dragology, even though it would have helped because it would have taken Rocky Helmet damage. So now looking back on it, it would have made sense to bring that in there. Um, but I, I think I was more so thinking like. Okay, let me. But if he clicks like a like a Specs Moonblast or something, or or predicts my switch, and uh, you know, God forbid, and cr you know, clicks. I think it gets Psychic, or definitely it get, definitely gets Ice Beam. And if that's a two KO, then you know I'm screwed. So wanted to get Drago in safely. Uh, and here I'm going to click Flip Turn again because I really don't expect this thing to stay in. It really needs to be healthy for uh, the Quackaval. And to me, it's worth the risk. Uh, at this point, it can't be specs. I mean, if it is specs, it's not staying in because it's just flip turning. Uh, I mean, it could stay in and flip turn and then take the Rocky Helmet damage, and that would be fine with me. Uh, that would actually be ideal if you click flip turn here. But, um, you know, so it, it's not specs, or if it is, it's not a problem right now in this turn. And <clears throat> anything else I should be able to deal with. It, it decently physically bulky as well, judging by the close combat damage. So, um, I kind of just, you know, flip turn again. I do get that right uh, again, luckily. And this time he goes back into Landorus. So we're going to get a little bit more chip as well. And we're going to go right back into Quackle Ball. Um, and at this point, um, it does, it is in range of the Aqua Step, obviously. I think it's been in range for a little while now. <laughs> um, I think I end up trying to 
justify, get it? I try to justify bringing in justifiable here to maybe get an iron defense off. Because um, I'm, I'm, I'm still doing calcs, I think, on the Quaquavol's uh, hits on uh, Primarina. I want to make sure that, you know, I can kind of deal with that thing uh, if it comes back in at this point because of the Roselli Berry being there. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to end up going into Quaquavol here after some calcs. Again, editing Andy here. But I didn't edit anything, so feel free to skip ahead <laughs> or do whatever. <clears throat> I'm going to take a little bit more Stealth Rocks damage, which is fine. Um, and we are going to end up uh, actually clicking the Aqua Step this turn. Um, because I figured if if Primarina comes in, that's fine. I still need two Aqua Steps to be able to outspeed Bruxish. Um, so, I, you know, I figured I might as well just click Aqua Step here in case he actually stays in. I didn't even expect to outspeed uh, the Landers. Um, so, you know, I was figuring I'd, I'd take, if he stays in and goes for a U-turn or, or even Earthquake, you know, at least I'll get the knockout there. But I actually do end up outspeeding, and we're going to end up knocking out the Landers. I think he was maybe expecting either a flip turn or a close combat there from my uh, Quaquaval. Uh, expecting, you know, obviously Primarina to come in, and it is close to being in range of a 2 8 KO on close combat, so, um, you know, we're gonna get the Moxie boost, which is actually huge, we get a plus one attack, uh, and obviously Primarine is gonna come in here, um, and I kinda have to make a decision, like, do I just pull the trigger now, or, or do I wait, um, you know, so only Fence comes in, it's obviously gonna, cl gonna click Moonblast here, uh, because that's, you know, can't risk overpredicting here, um, and, you know, I have the Roselli Berry, this is the situation I kinda wanted to be in. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Sword Stance. Uh, I can't really click Aqua Step into Close Combat. That's not going to knock this thing out. And I can't click Close Combat this turn uh, because it's going to lower my Special Defense and Defense and Special Defense. And then Bruxish might be able to come in and, and, and perhaps knock me out with an Aqua Jet afterwards. So, Or anything because it does still outspeed me um, because it's Choice Garfed. So... <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna end up clicking the sword stance. Uh, I'm just like reassuring myself at this point that I not, that I live any moonblast here, barring a crit. Um, so we do end up going for that big sword stance, uh, and he is gonna moonblast, which is great. I well, I would have preferred like a. Well, I don't think I would have preferred a flip turn because psychic fangs might have knocked me out from Bruxish there, um, as it is choice scarf. But at least I would have known that. So anyway, I live the uh, Moonblast, uh, and we go for close combat, and it lives on like 3 or 2%, and yeah, that, that's very upsetting. Um, I expected that to kill, obviously. Uh, I did the Calx, I'm like, this definitely has a good chance to kill, but obviously, you know, we didn't get either a favorable roll, or maybe I was just wrong about the Calx, so, um, you know, that's how a game goes, and you just gotta move on and, and see what you can do to try to win the game, so... Um, Samba goes down there. Um, if I do knock that out, obviously Bruxish comes into revenge because it's Choice Scarfed. But it, w I think it would have had to click Psychic Fangs there. Um, and if it clicks, well, may maybe it clicks, you know, whatever move it, like Wave Crash or something. And maybe that still knocks me out. Uh, but I would have known it's Choice Scarfed. So if it goes for Psychic Fangs, I get a free switch into Iron Crown. Um, and if it goes, or afterwards, like I could just bring in Iron Crown. If it goes for a Water type move, I get a uh, free swap into Dragology, uh, and I know I would have known it was locked in, so it would have really benefited me to get the knockout there, even if it wouldn't have really swept. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Dragology comes in. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to knock it out with a Sludge Bomb. I just clicked Sludge Bomb in case it switched. I didn't want to. I didn't want Bruxish coming in for whatever reason and then flip turning. I wanted to get some damage off on something, um, and obviously I couldn't Dragon Pulse there. Um, because it's because Primarine is immune. So at this point, it is three to two, but it's not looking terribly great for me uh, because it's, the Bruxish is all but scarf. Like we 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 don't know it's scarf, but it wouldn't have brought it wouldn't have come in on the Thunderous if it wasn't. So um, yeah, Hoizame comes in. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, which is the Salazzle. I'm expecting a Terra Ground to come off here, um, but I'm just gonna Dragon Pulse anyway. I figure if it's like a sub. If it's like a toxic sub protect set, um, you know, I don't really want to dragon tail. I want to just dragon pulse and get the most damage off. So it is going to be Terra Ground, and we're obviously going to see a little Terra Blast here, which is going to knock out uh, Dragology. So it's 2v2 uh, at this point. Uh, and this could go a number of different ways, um, some of which 
are good for me and some of which are bad. So obviously here, um, you know, I have a decision. Do I bring in, I could bring an Iron Crown to not kill, but ship the Salazzle so that an Earthquake will Oko it from, t from Ting Lu. Um, and then I'm kind of, but, but, but then I don't think Ting Lu beats the Bruxish. So I have to bring in Ting Lu here um, <clears throat> and just try to threaten this thing out with an Earthquake. Um, he, Grave is most likely, you know, expecting my Iron Crown at this point to be booster energy, and probably expecting it to be able to outspeed the, the Bruxish since it naturally outspeeds it. But again, I did not uh, prepare for um, this kind of set. I didn't prepare for a max speed Jolly Bruxish. I thought maybe it would probably be speed creeping the Arcanine, even though that's very minimal EVs uh, left over, but it's still something, right? So. Um, but I'm pretty sure, what is, I'm looking it up right now, uh, Iron Crown gets something. I mean, it gets X Scissor, but it's a special attacker. It does get Volt Switch, um, so maybe he was expecting the Volt Switch to be there. Um, but, yeah, wait, what happened here? Why is it over here? Okay, anyway, um, <laughs> I, uh, I end up clicking Earthquake there as he switched into Bruxish, obviously living that attack. Uh, maybe he was expecting a ruination, uh, I'm not too sure, but probably knowing that he's going to live any one attack. Um, bringing in the Bru Bruxish just to get some chip off on the Ting Lu. Um, yeah, I'm, gu I'm guessing Gravy expected the Iron Crown to have Volt Switch and to be able to deal a lot of damage to Bruxish. Um, but who knows? Um, I guess we'll just have to, you know, check out his, uh, his uh, perspective. Uh, when when these videos goes up go up uh, I think on Friday so um, anyway we're gonna earthquake again and I'm looking at the calcs I'm thinking I can live this hit so uh, why, I'm just gonna stay in um, I obviously kind of need to live this hit um, in order for everything to go my way so uh, I'm gonna earthquake uh, it does a lot of damage but not enough the uh, wave crash and we're obviously gonna knock out the Bruxish with earthquake um, <clears throat> And Ting Lu is going to get his leftovers back, which is awesome. Um, and now he's going to bring in his last mon, the Salazzle. Terra Ground Salazzle. At this point, the calcs don't really matter. Um, well, actually, they can't. Well, no. They, it, I only have, like, there's, there's, like, two or three turns left. And there's only, you know, two moves I'm going to be clicking in this game. Earthquake and Tachyon Cutter. So, it doesn't really matter what the calcs say. Um, if he's choice scarfed, uh, he doesn't knock me out here with anything barring a crit. Um, but if he, if he lands like three flamethrowers or three fire blasts, then he's obviously able to win if he's choice scarfed. Uh, but he goes for a terror blast here, um, which it is, ends up being choice specs with that damage, but, uh, it is not able to notch the KO. So, uh, you know, Ting Lu being a monster, I, I mean, I, I can't say enough about Ting Lu because it's great typing, but but Crocodile also had that typing, and I just never ended up liking Crocodile. I never I never ended up using it, so it's kind of crazy that um, you know that Ting Lu is just so much more favored by me. But I think it's just a great Pokemon. It's very bulky, and it's just it, it's just my type of uh, Mon in in draft league. So. Uh, ends up not getting the KO there with Earthquake, but it puts it in range. And at this point, I still, like, I pretty much know it's not Scarf. I know it's Specs, but I, I'm still, you know how you have that thing in the back of your head thinking, like, what if I'm wrong? Because that has happened in the in the past where I'm just completely wrong about stuff. Um, you know, I go into Justifiable. It is a speed boost with the booster speed, which will allow me to outspeed and get the Tachyon Cutter off. And win this game 1-0, which was a crazy battle. Um... Gravy GG, honestly. Um, yeah, it was just, it's kind of also crazy that each of my Pokemon got one kill um, and it was a 1 0. So, uh, very close, very fun match. Uh, make sure to go check out Gravy's uh, YouTube uh, channel in the description below. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.